Hi everyone, welcome back to another episode of the Elephant in the Room podcast series hosted by Dovu. I'm Radhika Bachu, the super striker, and I'm joined here today by... Rogitsu Nyengeri, chief thinker, co-founder and chief commercial officer of Dovu. Yeah, and today, as you guys have been hearing and watching the rest of the podcasts, I hope, listening, watching, whatever it is, uh, today we're actually going to talk about debt. Debt is something that is very familiar to everybody in Kenya, everybody around the world. Uh, the global debt number stacks up to 236% of the global GDP. Oof. 236%? Yeah, of the global GDP. It is more than the global GDP. How so mad. folks are producing stuff, there's an economy, but the debt around the world is bigger than what the economy exactly. is. Exactly. And wow. this global debt consists of governments, house, uh, household debt, as well as company debt. So you can imagine, in order to make money, people are actually taking on a lot of debt. But not all debt is bad. So if we compare this to the debt number in Kenya, two-thirds of uh, Kenya's GDP currently sits in debt. Hmm. That's big. That's also very big, right. but not as bad as the global debt. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Two hundred so, plus percent. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. So today we're going to talk about what is debt. What is why was debt invented? Uh, what was the purpose of it? Uh, what is uh, how do you manage debt well? And what are the best the things that you should know before you take out debt? And what we've done is during this uh, period of time, we've asked listeners to send in their debt stories. So today we're really excited to have somebody on the. Uh, podcast who'll talk about their real life debt story. So really bringing all these numbers that I've just said to life with a real life story. So tell me, Ro, why was debt invented? All right. Um, I, I, and I hope here you're not uh, making a play on my age again, <laughs> thinking that I was there when debt was actually invented. So actually, Ro, just to pipe in there, there were so many people who messaged me just yes. four digits, 1966 <laughs> from the first episode. <laughs> And they were like, how old do you think Ro is? <laughs> you really see? Yeah, I think but the no, undertones, there's under the really hits over here. Yes. That was the, the first episode's joke. Anyways, <laughs> moving on. So that, that is as, is, is as uh, old as time. I want to say as historical as time. It's is, is, is as old as time. Uh, we can't pinpoint to, to, to where it actually came from, whether it was Sumeria, it was India or China. Okay. But it's been with us from, from the dawn of, of uh, the global economy uh, as it was. Really, the motivation behind debt, uh, first and foremost, was to enhance trade. Mm -hmm. Okay, It was folks who have either uh, baked bread or they, they want to sell camels, you know, <laughs> and they need some sort of liquidity, some support uh, to enable this business to be carried on, whether it was in the immediate community mm -hmm. or across borders. So think about a guy in modern day uh, China selling stuff to someone in northern Italy, yeah. right? This is where the old Silk Road, for people who love history, this is where the old Silk Road uh, comes from. The original motivation of debt is, is actually to enhance uh, the circulation of money, number mm -hmm. one, and number two, to promote businesses. So do trade, and the initial focus was business, purely, purely on business. But over time, the folks who are engaged in business uh, realize that, wait, I could separate myself from my own uh, bread business or camel business yeah. and, and get money for myself for the stuff that I want to do that is completely separate uh, from my operation. Okay, mm -hmm. And this led to, to the birth uh, of the so-called the personal, personal loans industry. Personal banking. Yes. And in history, I'm a history buff, all this was in Italy. <laughs> Our CTO at some point, when he comes in, we have to accost him, right? Do, about yeah. banking, Italy. How did it start? How did it start? Yeah, was he there when it started? Yeah. yeah stuff like that. So, yes. so Ro, just going back, so actually debt was invented to support the growth of businesses. Correct. Uh, so that there's more money being generated in the economy, bigger profits, yeah. growth in businesses. So therefore, if we look at the global number that I said, that you know the global debt number is 236% of global GDP, yes. it makes a lot of sense. It makes sense, Because yes. actually debt isn't a bad thing. Mm -hmm. It's just what people have done with debt um, is what the challenge is today. Absolutely. So Ro, um, yeah. now we're going to bring in a special guest, Suleiman. Um, okay. to really talk about his real life experience with debt. So we can be the debt doctors to give him a bit of advice on three things. What to consider when looking at debt. Okay. How do you manage debt? And what's the difference between good and bad debt? Okay, looking forward. Yeah. Okay.
So welcome, Suleiman, to join. Thank you so much for joining us on one of our episodes. Um, what can we introduce yourself? Tell us what you do. Um, my name is Suleiman. That's my um, legal name. Better known as Solo. Oh, great. We'll call um, you Solo. Yeah. I'm a radio presenter um, and uh, creative at Capital FM. Uh, I think I've been here for a while. Uh, let me not mention how long a while is. <laughs> for calculating my age. Because we know what Radika does <laughs> in a while. We yes. know her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But um, today you're here to really talk us through your real life example yes. of how you've experienced debt and what you've done from a young age mm -hmm. and some learnings. So tell us more about your personal story with debt. What I'll actually do is just tell you my life story, what yeah. I've gone through myself, what I know. Because um, <clears throat> I believe that maybe somebody else would learn from what I've done. Mm -hmm. I've been watching um, some of the previous episodes that you've done and I've learned quite a bit. Mm -hmm. And Thank I you. thought this would be a good opportunity for me to also let other people know that um, they can try and get themselves out of debt or not get in, make the same mistake I've made. We had a, um, a, a circle back here at Capital many, many years ago that used to come, it never used to have too much money. So they'd randomly come and tell you, okay, we have money now, you can take a loan. Or when you want a loan, um, they'll tell you we don't have money now, but we'll let you know in a couple of weeks. So just rock up one morning and tell you, hey, we've got money. So <laughs> time for you to take a loan. Goes wild. Yeah, Way! and everybody's yeah. like, oh. So everybody's running, taking a loan, and you're looking. I'm like, okay, I don't want to feel like I'm left out. So you go and take your loan. But the thing is, you've not really planned for this loan. Mm -hmm. So I'm just taking money because money is available. So yeah. unfortunately, that young solo made decisions for a much older solo who got to learn a lot more things later on in life. So you start off with something small, 100, 200,000, and then you have all this money sitting in your account and you're like, wow, okay. And mm -hmm. we know what life is. I mean, you look at your house, you're like, you know what, let me try and just improve Upgrade. my living standards. <laughs> a bit. Yes. Yeah. So you move out of home, you get this apartment, and then you want, you're a ladies man, you want the ladies to come <laughs> home and feel comfortable when you come to your house. So the first thing you get is, you get a big TV, you've got carpet, you've made yourself very comfortable. Yeah. And you convince yourself that why did I leave my father and mother's home? I moved so I could actually have the same type of a lifestyle. So let me not move out for less. Mm -hmm. And it's justified. Yeah, of course. Mm -hmm. So the money is depleted. And you start servicing the loan. And because at that point in time, you don't have um, what I call responsibilities. Yeah. You're very comfortable with it. So yeah. just going back, how old were you? Uh, let's say I was 24, 25. Okay, so living okay. your best life in your 20s. I was living my best life. <laughs> I'm telling you, cable, TV, everything that works. Literally, if you came to my house, you'd actually think it's someone who's been out of the folks' house for a very long time. Okay. Yeah. It's very comfortable. For a couple of months later, um, they come and tell us, oh, we've got another surplus of money. If you want, you can take a top up. So I look, I'm like, uh, okay, bring it on. So you take us a top up. Yeah. Now. What you don't factor into all this is there are so many other hidden charges that they don't talk about. Exactly. At this point in time, they just tell you, take the loan, you sign the paper, sign here, sign here, sign here, and they disappear. Yeah. Um, and then end of the month, you're looking at what has been deducted. You're like, oh, okay. Anyway, I can take it. I don't have responsibilities. Yeah. So you're, you're, you're paying back more, more than you are at that point in time. Yes. Because mm -hmm. first thing is you actually have to pay back the first loan. Correct. And then now take up the additional amount and then start the entire process of oh, the insurance fresh. and all those things all over again. Yes. But yep. you know what? You're young and since it's been taken straight out of your salary, I really don't feel the pinch. Mm -hmm. So you continue. Because you think of it as money you never had. Yeah, and you really don't think of that is my money they're taking. Exactly. You know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And for as long as you still have something small to sustain you, you're comfortable. You're fine, yeah. So anyway, yeah, you go, you buy a car, you do this and that, you upgrade your car from this and that. So what I used to do is, um, on the side, I used to buy and sell cars. Mm -hmm. So as okay. much as I was working in the office, I had um, a side hustle. Yeah, a yeah. 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 side hustle. Of yeah. course. Yes. I'd buy a car um, from somebody sell it or not even have to buy it i just introduce it to the person who's selling make my commission and i was able to but you see the thing is instead of putting the money back into paying the loan you I spend off, it let me spend it or keep it in my pocket and you know money doesn't spend and then the people who pay you on a friday evening uh -huh. just before you go out on the weekend yeah. and i was that i was the life of the party yeah, yeah. you're so, like yeah. yeah i'm a big guy the money never went back to the account never ever did never. Yes. so yeah. i was that guy everyone used to call because i had a car i had a nice place so people mm -hmm. want to come to your place to have parties and you really don't notice that you know what um yeah. there is more to life than that so Fast forward to when you start getting responsibilities in life. So mm -hmm. 
you start getting let me call it black tax um you've got these relatives who now know you're working yeah and everybody's expecting you to do something small for them so you're getting all these phone calls and when people notice that you're an easy target because you have no responsibilities yeah yes. they keep on calling and you feel like it's your responsibility because yes she took care of me when i was young and you know this is my auntie or this is my cousin so you keep on chipping in chipping in. so you, you're just finding yourself drained of, of finances yes yeah. Um fast forward again. Um you start noticing that life isn't as it was. Um you're starting to get a, a bit more responsibilities. I went to school back mm-hmm. and to do my masters. Oh wow. Um I paid my own fees. Mm-hmm. Um my dad was like, "Listen, you are you earning your own money. Uh, start uh, being Fair. responsible." <laughs> I mean, he could see the lifestyle I'm living is like hmm, yeah. I pay your fees while you no 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 yeah traditional so Kenyan yes. I like it yes yes <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. So I said you paying my fees and I said noticing okay now I'm beginning to struggle yeah and um when I sat down and decided because I'd never really sat down to look at my finances mm-hmm. um a big mistake a lot of young oh yes oh yes young let me tell you do. if you really don't get to sit down and look at how much you're spending in a month if you really don't look down and look at um uh how much you're putting aside in a month don't just put aside money and assume okay since i've got my savings i'm still good you need to look at the spending, spending. Yeah. no i didn't do that yeah. um when i sat down and wondered where is all my money going i looked and noticed that a bigger chunk of my salary was going towards paying this loan mm-hmm. and i told myself you know what i'm not taking another loan i can't do this i can't handle this because anyway let me continue paying off that loan when i finish I'll try and sort out and rearrange my life but there's no mm. such thing as that because you see the young solo made plans for the solo of many more years to come yes. yeah. without consulting yes. yeah and I was not putting my money into something that would generate some income back correct mm-hmm. so I was depending on my side hustles and my what so I found myself having to take up two or three other side hustles yes. to try and maintain my lifestyle because now my own my entire salary is going towards paying um this loan and I got to a point where I did a quick deal made some good money had a million shillings actually I had 1.8 million shillings and a friend of mine came and told me listen I just need he was in business and he was yeah. doing very well okay. okay do you have some money some do you have a cash or some cash on you I just need like 1m um, I need to mm-hmm. do this on this, Bro, on this on this next time you need cash call solo <laughs> solo is changed the young solo no no, no that, that was the young solo this one <laughs> this is a, diff- a very different one now yeah. by yeah. then I had started getting responsibility so here you are planning to get married here mm-hmm. you are planning to do this here's your you're, you're, you're planning to do so many things around you yeah. um there's that uh, pressure from your parents that you know what you need to start doing something with your money so of you're course. trying to do a few investments into stock here and there yes. you're losing money because you're not investing in the right way you're just buying shares because people are buying shares yeah you're not going with it guided so there's no one to really guide you and you're just making all these mistakes so you go and you buy these particular shares when they come off and then you notice from the day you bought and the f- week after you're seeing them plummeting 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 so mistake you make again is you go and say you know what let me pull out this money before and you've already lost yes so we, you we can tell you've listened to our podcast <laughs> I, I, I made a lot of i made a, a lot of bad mistakes but the thing is um, now when i look at them yeah. um their life lessons yes that i can sit and tell and talk to people mm-hmm. and i'll tell you plan your money yeah um, from the get-go I keep on telling people the one thing is respect money. Respect money. Um the same way you can respect somebody is how you should respect money because today it's with you tomorrow it's not going to be there. And I yeah. always say this, making money is actually easy. Oh, Keeping yes. money is much harder. Spending it is is fun. It's it's easy. Easy. Yes. If, you're not, if you're not spending it on the right things. Yeah. So yeah. here he is, I gave out my um I gave him actually 1.2 million. Okay. He promised okay. to pay it back in 2 days. Okay. Um a week later he hadn't paid me. Mm-hmm. And you see the worst thing is I I kept on thinking that you know what? I have this money I just don't have it in my hand and he'll pay me yes. because I always believed I was as as ignorant and I believed that that everybody's good natured and they will pay you back. Mm. So I decided you know what let me do this. I was hard hit for cash. I just decided let me take a small top up, not much, 200k. But now that 200k starts the process again. Yeah. Yes. Like the first loan or you take out a different loan from somewhere else. So I did two things. I started using my credit card to make to get care of some small small things. Yeah. And here I am now taking a new loan. Right. When I sat down and looked at how much I was losing in total, it was already half my salary. Wow. 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 And it's it's now too late. And um when I went back to ask for my money, he told me, "Boss, let me tell you, unfortunately my business is not doing too well. Mm-hmm. Oh, God. Um give me some time to um get things back in check." Yeah. So you've borrowed to sort that out you've got money that you have but you don't have yeah. yes so i promise myself one thing first things first i'm not borrowing any more money 
no normal chance. loans. Okay. Um, no advance, nothing. I took my credit card and I cut it into pieces because I noticed the mistake I was I was doing is I was. It's very easy to borrow, mm -hmm. and at mm -hmm. the point when you want to borrow, you do have intentions of paying. Of course. But you've not really factored in what else is happening in your life. Yes. Uh, fast forward to COVID, and then we we got hit and we had a fifty percent reduction on our salary. And remember, I was already paying using my fifty percent of my salary to pay. Yeah. So you look back and you're like, wow, okay. Reality checks in really fast. And yes. let me tell you, it is clear. Yes. HD clear. Yes. yes. So here you are, and you've got a family that is depending on you. You've got people who depend on you. You've already got them into a certain um, habit. Habit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm of whenever they did this it's you yes so you've got um your small let me call them charities or small things that you do to give back to society mm -hmm. and here you are now the one who needs the money mm -hmm. yeah. yeah and when you look up there there's no one you can really go out to because everybody's also hard hit or and that's actually when you realize who your real friends are because you try to talk to somebody about finances um first thing they think is you want money from them yes, yes. so they're like oh, you know me i don't have cash eh? Mm. Okay. Mm -hmm. let, me, let, 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 let me just stop you. Don't don't let's, let's go too far. Yeah. I don't have money to help you. Yes. And all you're doing is trying to look for somebody to help you out of this. Yes. So I sat down with myself. I sat down with um, somebody who does finance and just told me, listen, let's just do this. Let's let's do some pretty. Do you really need to do all these things? No. Let's just cut this off. Cut. 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 Yeah. Cut. Cut. All right. Yes. Mm -hmm. Long of the short is, I'll not lie. I cannot tell you why I got money, but I got money legally. Um, I worked hard. Yes. Yeah. I worked yeah. hard. I worked ex actually <laughs> twice as hard. Yes. And I did I worked twice as smart. Yes. All right. So whatever money I made on the side, instead of pocketing it though you normally pocket it, I'll send it straight into the loan account. Yeah. Yes. Um I went I sat down with the loan guys and we restructured it. And Very I can good. say I should be finished by January of next year. I have not touched my savings from the circle, meaning I still have something set aside. Yeah. Very good. Um as for the credit card all I did is as soon as I started reducing, um, getting a, a bit of extra money, I told them, let me take out more money to pay back the credit card much faster. Yes. yes. Okay. And, and then, why did you do that? Was it because the rate on the credit card was higher than the salary? The thing is, you know, you don't notice the credit, how much a credit card will charge you because you're taking money that is not yours. Yes. And they're not telling you how much you're going to be paid or charge, they're going to charge you. Yeah. Um. So for as long as it's not, you're not having that conversation with them, you're very safe or you feel very safe. Mm -hmm. and sheltered yeah. yeah but when you go back to your account your account at the end of the month and let me tell you the first of the month they don't want to know if there's money or no money they, they, they will deduct it. yes yes they will yes. deduct that's the first thing they do and then you enter into overdraft and then there's more charges yes so the minute you start looking about at how all your money is just disappearing it, it made me think and i was like you know what i can't sustain this no i have got um um for example you get kids and these are not people you can tell, okay, we need to wait. We can wait for next month or let's try and restructure how we take you to school. Yeah. No, no, or eat. They are, they yes. Are, yes. Yeah. What they want is what they want there and then. Yes. We need diapers. We need formula. We need this. Yeah, of course. So I had to look back at my own life and how to change how I did my my, my, my spending. Okay. So before I pull out my wallet or my impressor, because, and let me tell you, the worst thing that comes up is, yes, things like... Um, Bank to Mpesa is, is a brilliant, brilliant thing, but if you're not um, well disciplined, yes, you'll just find yourself sweeping out money, yeah, faster than you can earn it. And if you're spending more than you can earn, or faster than you can earn, if there's still more month at the end of the month than you have salary, correct, correct, then you have a problem with how you're spending, mm -hmm. and you need to change that. Mm -hmm. I really hope and believe there's somebody out there who can help people also. I mean, I know that many people were going through what I'm going through. Yeah. Um, I've had this platform to talk to you and share and listen to what you guys have also been saying. Um, if you don't take care, you can really find yourself in debt, and debt is a nasty place to be. Mm -hmm. It's hard to get out of, especially if you don't have a plan, mm -hmm. if you're not disciplined. If you're taking a loan, take a loan with a purpose, and not just a purpose. Look at it long term. Can you wait for those 10 years to pay back this money to somebody else? Why do you think... I mean, bank bank guys have targets yeah. to make sure they sell you loans. Don't take a loan to save that girlfriend of yours who works for a bank. No. <laughs> do people do that? Will, yes. That's madness. That relationship we do will that. end. Yes. Really? Yes. yes. We, yes, go yes, to, yes, yes. we go to extreme yeah. lengths to, yes. to secure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, um, always think about 
what your plan in life is and vis-a-vis what you're earning and where you want to go. Yeah. Try and earn more, spend less. That's definitely the first thing. And and yeah. if you don't develop a saving culture now, um, the next time a COVID hits us, yes, um, we'll be on our knees. At this point in time, I don't consider a house an investment anymore because it's not. Um, I go and buy, spend this amount of money. I'm paying a mortgage of 140,000 every month to service this um, apartment. Right. And it's only bringing me 100,000 in rent because the person who moved in just told me, listen, it's 100,000, take it or leave it. Yeah, and, and there's nothing it. you do. So yeah. I'm still having to go back into pocket to fork off another 40,000 to sustain this house. Yeah. yeah. Make sure you get proper financial advice from somebody who knows finance, yeah. somebody who knows money. Times are no longer the same. Advice from your parents or your friends. Don't do things because of peer pressure. If it's a business that you're doing and you keep on plowing in money for too long, it's good to sometimes just say, you know what, it's not working. Cut it. Yeah. yeah. And, yeah. And, and there's nothing wrong with saying it's not working. Yeah. Because we have to try things, we have to fail, and then you recognize what works and the next business Move will be Move on to the next. Exactly. Yes, yes. Yeah. If, if we could live in a hypothetical utopian world, mm-hmm. solo, <laughs> and you travel back to your youth, what will this solo now ah, yeah, yeah, tell yeah, that yeah, young yeah. solo? Let me tell you, if I yes. be a bit more um, aggressive when it comes to my this, the castles. And what I'd do is I'd mm-hmm. make sure I had a separate account. 100%. Don't yeah. pay me cash. Yes. Put the money into that account. Yeah. Okay. Deposit yeah. it mm-hmm. and bring me the slip. Yes. That's first. Because what it does, it gives me control and I know how much I'm actually making. Yes. Correct. Okay. Two, um, I'm not being in a hurry to leave home. My folks were not chasing me from home. Yes. So why was I running away? <laughs> <laughs> you know, we look, we look for freedom, we look for that, but were we ready for it? Because there were life lessons we were learning from that house. Yes. So mm-hmm. I'm just going to add to that. So I am in my 30s, and I'm, my husband and I still live with our parents because we're like, why would we go out to buy, pay rent, pay full bills when mom and dad are taking care of it. <laughs> Why? That's crazy. I don't need freedom. Mom and dad did not hear this. Yeah, That's mom and dad, you did not. <laughs> the, the thing is, we, 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 we sometimes push ourselves into things that we really don't deserve. But also yeah. things you're not ready for. Yeah. 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 Why am I trying to live or make society perceive me in a certain way? Yes, and I, I actually have, think I so, though. It. Yeah. You're st- we are still the lucky generation where we didn't come into a world of social media. Mm-hmm. Now with social media, you know, younger kids feel the pressure to be oh, perceived yes. a certain yes. way. Yes. And they are the ones who are going to be making worse financial decisions than we did. We weren't out every single weekend. Um, you'd spend, what, 10, 15,000 in a night and you'd be very comfortable with Rose that. Rose definitely spent way more than that on a night. That was my life when I was younger. So I, I feel you. So the thing yes. is, if, if you can't earn that 15,000 in a day, why are you spending it in a day? Makes sense, yeah. yeah. Why? You know? Yes. And if you spent this 15,000 on something else, I think we should actually have make, make investing more fun. Yeah. When you understand it, take time to read, time to, to, to understand it. And when you see your money grow, that is where the, the real kick in life should be. Don't get caught up in, in, in peer pressure. So is that your starting interview when you welcome them? Don't conform no, to I, peer I, pressure? I, I, well, the funny thing is I actually talk to um, the younger guys in the office and I tell them, you know what, if you can now, don't do this, 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 and this, and this. Some Good. listen, some don't care. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. the thing is, um, it's still information shared. Exactly. What you do with that is up to, it's up to you. It's up to you. Yeah. Yeah. In a nutshell, all I'll say is respect money and I think it will respect you. 100%. You couldn't have said it better. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, yeah. And I hope you guys have learned something. Um, keep on checking out what's happening here. This is a podcast that can actually help you a lot. Share it. Um, pass it on. Pass on the information that you get from here to others. You never know who you could be helping. Yeah. No, thank you so much, Solo. Thank you, guys. Yeah. Wow. That was a really, really interesting story. I mean, I think he's done our job. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, Solo has nailed every single point that we actually wanted to cover uh in our debt doctor session you know yeah so why don't you summarize what are the six yeah. money mistakes people make when taking okay. out debt so i'll try to to pick them out even in, in the order of the story that 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 solo shared with us ali um the first thing that uh, i got was he took on debt of peer pressure you know people everyone was borrowing and like hey i want to get into this thing it's as a well. party yes so first and foremost there was unnecessary borrowing he yeah. actually didn't need it yeah. and he went out and borrowed okay uh the second thing that came out clearly was that 
there was no sort of emergency fund that he could dip into at any particular point mm-hmm. okay uh the third bit uh, that i could pick up from the story was uh the fact that he gave money to a friend when he got the 1.8 million he gave out 1.2 without so, really thinking about he why never thought about yeah. it yes so he actually gave out money that he was not ready to lose uh to this friend uh whoever he was and know. exactly where right. we always say that lending money to a friend is in your high risk portfolio yes because it might not come back and in his example it didn't it didn't yes yeah the next thing uh, that solo did classic money mistake is that he was heavily engaged in unnecessary spend you know yeah. he mentioned the issue was buying cars selling upgrading you know because people around him were like hey, you are the guy you <laughs> need to have the latest evo or whatever right yeah. so there was unnecessary spend then something quite clear is what I call double dipping okay so he had he had a loan before suddenly he needs to top up again because there's peer pressure yeah so he goes in borrows more uh, and there goes not only the cost of the credit itself but the hidden uh, charges hidden charges yeah whether it be legal whether it be administration all this was hitting him and just piling on the debt mm-hmm. that, that that he was facing and last but not least there was no investment plan at all <laughs> right so there was all this cash coming in flowing out he never thought about hey let me invest but not even invest he yes. said that he didn't even know what he was spending that is true and you know yes. in our 20s the reality is we don't look at our expenses because we're like yeah we're in some money yes <laughs> i got some money but that's the step that we always say when it comes to looking at a financial plan mm-hmm. look at what you're spending absolutely because yes. yes you're saving but maybe you can save more and then you must invest absolutely yeah. yes no and i like that and then ro so he as he mentioned he was like i just took money out without even thinking about it i borrowed money for no particular reason yes yes unfortunately there are times in life where you do have to borrow money what are some key things people should think about before taking out a loan what are the key things they should consider okay just before answering that particular one um we know there are certain situations so there's an emergency for example yeah. right uh incident why happens someone is unwell uh, there's no medical cover i think we touched on this in an earlier episode yeah. there's a major emergency on the medical side so you take a quick loan to 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 help your loved one you, you can't help it in that particular situation you can't. all right if we exclude this particular scenario and say we want to analyze i want to take out a facility on facilities borrowing you have to borrow some money uh what are kind of things you're going to look at i think first and foremost is what is the reason why you're actually taking out this money exactly you don't want to be in a peer pressure situation again like like solo alluded to mm-hmm. right am i using uh the money that i'm borrowing for productive purposes is it going to be something that's going to give me generate some income of course yeah am i taking this loan to pay off another expensive loan that actually <laughs> exists yeah. you know so number of things what is actually the purpose of of you borrowing uh this money and also yeah. we're going back to debt debt yes. was invented for you to be able to make more profits of course so if you're yeah. going to borrow to spend don't do it simple as don't do it you yes. don't need it you, you don't, don't need it yes <laughs> any reason you just don't need it yeah okay so the purpose is is, is quite important uh s- number two um solo mentioned that he did not actually know the costs of all these things because yeah. he felt he felt no pain the money was being deducted from his salary he had no clue yeah. right before borrowing you need to know what this is actually going to cost you okay exactly. institutions will mention a number they'll tell you hey we're going to charge you 14% uh per what annum. does the 14% mean what is it yeah. right or some some are vague they're deliberately vague so they tell you we're going to charge you 4% above prevailing central bank rate what is that what does that mean right you yeah. need to read this documentation carefully actually understand what is the quantitative impact of all these numbers so ro you I'm and seeing. i are a little old school i'd get yeah. a paper i'd say okay so what's the total i'm spending over 5 years yes does it make sense am i even going to earn that much in order to be able to pay it off yes. so i would get a pen and paper and start writing old school way you need to respect the money as as solo said so you need to know the, the emotions and feelings behind money that is a cost you need exactly. to understand it okay mm-hmm. um are you going to be able 
to service. Service is your ability to repay this debt. Mm -hmm. You're earning a certain amount of cash. Mm -hmm. We cannot make an assumption that you will always be making this amount of cash. The pandemic. Exactly. That, yeah. We have a good example here where he underwent a 50% pay mm -hmm. right? In an extreme scenario, suddenly you don't have, don't have the income that you have. Are you going to be able to actually pay off this particular debt yeah. that, that you're facing? Okay. Another thing I'll actually look at when, when considering debt is what is the absolute amount? Absolute amount is what am I borrowing now? Okay, yeah. I'm borrowing in 2022. I'm borrowing X. A million shillings. Yeah. I'm going to pay this over, say, five, six, ten years. Then at the end, that amount as well. Does it actually make sense for me to borrow this now to pay that huge amount of that? At the end, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And it does make sense if you're using the money that will generate more income. Only in that situation, yes. Correct. Yes. But not if you're borrowing it to impress a girl. <laughs> <laughs> the bane of many of us. Exactly. Okay? Something else that also comes into play, and many Kenyans are feeling it now, mm -hmm. all right? Because before, uh, I could just borrow, it was easy, money comes in, spend, whether it's cars, ladies, or whatever you want to spend yeah. it with. But there was a rise of credit bureaus. Yes. Right? The regulation was passed in this country a couple of years ago. And there's... Uh, a dirty word that now exists in society, which is a CRB, yeah. Credit Reference Bureau. Uh, this is an institution that is designed really to capture credit history. Have you borrowed before? What has been your performance mm -hmm. in terms of paying off the debt? Are you a good guy? Are you in the middle? Are you a delinquent? It means you've not paid any <laughs> debt, okay? Yeah. You also have to consider what your CRB status is. Mm -hmm. So think of a scenario where you did the 500 bob, you're much older, you need this money for something productive. Yeah, I want right? to start a business. Then you go in and see everybody tells you, hey, no, you borrowed money 10 years ago, you didn't pay 500 bob, negative. So I have a question. Yes. Can you pay off the 500 bob and be wiped or is it Of on course. Your no, 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 you, you pay it. So okay. what happens, you pay it off to the institution. Okay. The institution notifies the ref reference bureau. Okay. Right? And then finally, there are situations where debt, uh, some debt facilities required to put in some collateral. <laughs> right? Yeah. Uh, so you want to invest, you, wanna, you, you want to go into this weird adventure. Yeah. You want some money, so you say, you know what, I'm going to borrow some cash. Uh, put my lovely home oh. up as security <laughs> to go into this weird adventure. Never do that. As right? in never. Ever. Ever. Do that. <laughs> never. <laughs> yeah. So in a nutshell, I think these are the points that an individual should actually consider when thinking about taking out a facility yeah. from, from an institution. Yeah. Yeah. No, and I, and I think they're all valid points. I think, um, you know, whatever you've just said, if if Solo knew that before taking out money, yeah. he'd be in a much better financial position. Exactly. And, and that just means that you can then continue building your wealth. And we talk about how it is important to look at your debt, your expenses, because actually it's every little 500 shillings that matters. Exactly. It's not the big money that you think about. It's the small things that small changes you make yeah. can actually get you into a much successful position and we all aspire to be successful yeah. we all want to be rich and stress-free when it comes to money so there's there's a saying uh, in swahili they call it a methali anyone okay. out there remember swahili class yeah. it's a methali it says haba na haba Ujaza yeah. kibaba. It's the small, tiny things that actually fill the pot. They fill the pot. Yeah. It's true. No, but Ro, so, you know, we've talked about debt. Yeah. Um, you know, debt was actually invented to be a good thing. Yes. Um, le let's take Solo's example, for example. He was going and he was borrowing more and more. Um, and in order to pay off the debt, you need to know what good debt is and bad debt. Yes. So what what would you, in simple terms, say is a good type of debt versus bad debt? And how would you consolidate your debt to give somebody the plan to get out of debt? Okay, so two a things. A lot of then. debt. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so two things. One, we've alluded to when you're talking about good debt. Yeah. You're, you're borrowing in order to do something productive. Yeah. You're, you're not using it to please that human uh, or please your social circle because you have the latest car. It's deliberately focused on, you know what, I'm getting this cash uh, to do Venture X. This Venture X is going to generate revenue. Mm -hmm. This revenue, as I have planned it out or as I have projected, after thorough analysis, the revenue that is coming in is more than going to offset my, my obligation. So of it's going to pay pay off the loan The yeah. loan, and you have some, some cash uh, uh, being left over. Yeah. Anything else that deviates from this yeah. is not good debt. Yeah. This is something that's going to get you into some sort of vicious cycle, which takes us into a scenario, yes, you're in bad debt, 
but you can cure yourself. It's mm-hmm. like you're ill, you get diagnosis, you get medication for it, exactly. right? Take this once, three times a day, and you're going to get out of the situation you're in. Debt consolidation is one of these things. We talked about this in an earlier episode. Yeah. You can go to a financial institution. The financial institutions have two things. One, they are not all devils. Don't think they are, they are <laughs> the bad guy incarnated. Yeah. Number two, they work under regulations. They They're do. Clear regulations, right? So you can step into a financial institution and say, guys, we need to have a chat. Yeah, you know? I need some help. Of course. So a yeah. big institution can do a self-assessment. Yes. Do a diagnosis and say, this is the way we're actually going to go forward. If a big company can do that, why not you yeah. as an individual, mm-hmm. right? So you can do debt consolidation. Walk in, tell them this is a reality, this is what is happening. Yeah. Uh, let's negotiate this. Because no institution wants that default. Of course right? not. They want to limit the default rate, so they're willing to do it. So if you have multiple loans elsewhere, just say, let me reconsolidate this. I would yes. actually make that your step one before you even think about investing if you have a lot of loans. Yeah. So you need to find a way. We know this amount of money that we actually owe on, say, the digital side. Yeah. Uh, we owe this money on the credit cards of because course. credit cards are also expensive. Companies, banks will charge you, say, 5% on outstanding balance every single month. Yeah, it's a lot of you money. You do that times 12, that's 60%. It's already, that's expensive that, that you're carrying on the card. Before you go in, you'd know what you can service. You'd make yes. a plan. You need to look at your expenses and say, do you really need this stuff? No, I don't. Yeah. Out it goes, out this goes. Look at your black tax fund. We did an episode earlier. Yeah. How do you limit your black tax? This obligation of wanting to help people can be limited. You know, How do you get yourself out of debt? Because guess what? When you get older, there's no one else to help you out. You are the adult in that situation. Yes. And it's you. So me, I would, myself and I. Me, myself and I, <laughs> yes. literally. So yeah, so I would, I mean, it's great advice, bro. I think uh, if people don't really know, the everyday Kenyan doesn't know that they can actually just walk into an institution and say, listen, I'm having trouble paying this. How can you help me? Yeah. So that's a really good step. I'd recommend you explore it. Great. Um, and so, Ro, you know, We've discussed about good debt, bad debt. Yeah. Um, one thing we've talked about um, managing debt as well, um, yeah. you know, consolidating. Do you have any um, advice that you can give people, the mm-hmm. younger generation, on if you need to borrow, even if it's not for a business-led purposes, what are the smart available options yeah. of borrowing in the market available to them today? For this particular question that you asked, the smart way is always to start with friends and family. Always, yeah. Because once you step out of that zone, you're going into, you're going into interest territory. Yeah. And uh, the Muslims call it riba, right? So you step into riba and it has its own ramifications. Yeah. So the smart way for the young guy who has a nice idea, I think, you know what, this thing will be productive for me. Yeah. Go into your immediate circle. Even us as founders, you know, when we started our businesses, the the first investors were the social circle. It was friends, it was our family. Of course. That was the initial seed capital for for our business. So I'll go back to that. It's tried, it's tested, it's it's worked for centuries. Yeah. This arrangement of borrowing from the community predates financial institutions. Exactly. Yeah. Chamas still do it. Yes. <laughs> yes, yes. Go back to that. Yeah. 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 And I also think there's some value in like, even when you borrow to start a business, always start small and do everything that, do it on a budget. Like if it, you need 500 shillings to spend here, do you really need to spend 500 shillings? Is there a free way on the internet you can do this? Yes. So yes. it's all about like budgeting, making sure you're keeping your costs low. Because even the money you borrowed from your friends, you still have to pay back, but it gives you a bit more runway. Yes. So this really nicely links into a couple of episodes we did before about, you know, what is your financial plan? We need to first tackle debt because the reality is that if you're paying 13, 14% on a loan, you're the there's no point investing because there won't be investments where you're going to earn more than 13 14 15 percent they are but they're high quite high risk yeah but you should always look to pay off your bad debt great so i think we've covered quite a lot uh some really good takeaway points um and yeah we uh, look forward to you coming back thank you so much i'm radhika bachu your super striker i am ron yangeri the chief thinker And we're out. Thanks, Rads, for hosting. Thanks. You're welcome. (laughs) Great job. Yeah.